Well, if he came out next, MJF did. He got a promo bearing John Moxley. He says, I'm not playing a character. You are. I read your book. He says, you were uneducated, poor, white trash scumbag from the sticks. You got bullied. You got beat down. Your bike got stolen. Inside, I know you're still that same scared kid, but now you're old enough. You can be a worthless drunk, too. And this is a message to you, to Chris Jericho, and to Brian Danielson. Bad things happen when people get in my way. You should take a vacation and skip Arthur Rash. He's talking about being the demon that Moxley can't slay. And finally he says a young group of gentlemen helped him procure this uh, poker chip at the pay-per-view. It's the stable that is on a retainer led by his best friend, a man he has known since he was 19, Stokely Hathaway and The Firm. Out comes Stokely Hathaway and The Firm. Stokely's talking about how MJF wanted to quit. You should be happy about this. He connected some more dots for you. MJF wanted to quit AEW until Stokely Hathaway met with them, said if you quit, they'll get what they wanted. It's time for you to go back and get what you want. And so, as Stokely explains, we prayed and prayed and came up with a plan. <laughs> I laughed so hard at that part. So they are their own stable. They are the firm. And when MGF doesn't need them, they're going to go their separate ways. And at this point, Maxwell disappeared. He disappeared when they came out. I thought, I thought he was at least in the ring when they got there. but No, yeah, I yeah. think he was on his way out when they got there. So, okay, that's a weird thing, but sure, why not? So he declares he is not a publicist, nor a manager, nor an assistant. He is a friend. He's been spending time with everyone backstage, watching reruns of Living Single with the House of Black. He explains the juicier the gossip, the more power you have. Good old-fashioned blackmail wakes him up in the morning. And he goes through the members of the, of the firm... And what each of them wants. Now, three of them, the, the, the funny one, the first one is actually the funniest. I'm going to say that for last. But Lee Moriarty, he wants to be the Ring of Honor pure champion. The guns, and you call them ass boys, they're not boys, they're men. And there were some scattered chants of ass men, which may be even funnier. As they want to, they want to escape the shadows of the broke ass daddy and win their broke ass daddy and win those tag titles. Ethan Page, who got a big pop. He wants the All-Atlantic title to represent his home nation of Canada. The first one was Morrissey, who just says he wants to do whatever he wants. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but Morrissey's standing there the entire time looking like he doesn't want to be there. Kind of. And if you watch only Morrissey, like he's just standing there, he's all shifty-eyed, <laughs> like looking around like this. And I, I'm just, I got to, I, I, I don't know what's going on here because it looks like he already wants out. And it's literally his first day in, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, what the fuck's going on with this guy? I don't know. Like, you know, first, it's like Stokely, I don't know if he tried to hug him or whatever. Or he said, you know, you're great or whatever. And Morrissey ignores him. And then Stokely has to repeat himself. Morrissey goes, I heard you. <laughs> I'm like, why are you with this group if you don't want to be with this group? You just got here. It's not like this has been building for a year. So I don't know what's going on with Morrissey, but it was weird. Now. This MJF promo. So I did see some criticism on our board. They weren't blown away by this MJF promo. But uh, I thought that his delivery was great. I know that some people get on him about cheap heat, but, you know, the fact of the matter is cheap heat's that thing that everyone, you know, they're like, oh, cheap heat this, cheap heat that. And the reality is if you got one guy who does cheap heat and that's like his gimmick, that's fine. And he used the line about how Moxley was just a scared little boy. The only difference is now he's old enough to drown his troubles in alcohol like a drunk. And man, he got them to boo him at that point. And he needed something because they were cheering him like madly from the moment he came out. And for those of you wondering, this is not supposed to be a babyface MGF. He's supposed to be a heel. Like, I don't know where they're going which I'll get to in a second. But one way or the other, he's supposed to be a heel. And so there's two things here. One of them is that he was anti-authority. And even if you love the authority, even if you're one of those people that goes, oh, they didn't make Tony Khan a heel, whatever, he's still an anti-authority figure. And not only that, he got his way. His anti-authority deal was, I want more money. And the storyline is, he got more money. So... You know, there's going to be a portion of the crowd that's cheering him as a baby face for that. He's also been gone, and so now he's back, and, you know, at least for a while because of that, he's going to be cheered. 
but he's trying very, very hard, obviously, to get himself booed, and this crowd didn't want to boo him. Now, as far as, like, the the content of his promo, they clearly wanted MJF on the show last week and this week to capitalize on him coming back. But what was supposed to happen? Well, he was supposed to be feuding with CM Punk. Well, CM Punk got in a locker room fight, and he got himself suspended, and he also got injured, and we may not see him again for nine months. We may never see him again. So now we've got a tournament to determine a new champion. Well, MJF can only say so much. I mean, you can't go too hard on John Moxley because either A, you're revealing that Moxley's going to win, or you're teasing something that is not going to be the next title feud. So you kind of have to talk about Moxley. You kind of have to talk about Brian Danielson. You kind of have to talk about Chris Jericho. But you really can't be hyper-focused on anything because now we're waiting to find out who the champion is going to be. So if you didn't like the, the promo and you felt that it was whatever, I mean, this is what they're working with right now. Once we have a new champion next week, everything can be focused again because now everybody's going to know what direction they're going. Now nobody knows what direction they're going. And if you say too much, you reveal the direction. So anyway, they're in a tough spot is my point. This whole segment was very long. Was yeah, that... these people were not in Stokely. Yeah, it took a lot of time. Well, it wasn't just Stokely. They weren't in anything for the most part. Yeah. This is how the show begins, really. Oscar does a back kick, camera cut. She does a back fist, camera cut. She starts to run, camera cut. She hits a hip attack, camera cut. She drops to her knees, camera cut. She throws a kick, camera cut. She stands up and screams, camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious, do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.